Hi, Mike Dole plays here back at the Packers practice here at Rainichke Field. This is just across the street from Lambeau Field. It's one of the places that the Packers practice and it's open to the public. When you come to town to, to see the Packers, whether it's training camp, organized team activities like we're watching today, or even a game, you'll want to certainly see all things Packers. And I'll, and I'll show you on this guided tour some of those things. But also there's some fun other things to do in this town that you'll want to do because Packers only practice so, so many hours a day. Now Green Bay itself is, uh, if you look at the state of Wisconsin, it's kind of shaped like a hand. If Milwaukee and Chicago are down here, Green Bay is right at the base of this thumb with, with uh, Lake Michigan being in this area to kind of give you an idea where it is when you come to town. We're only 100,000 residents in this town, which is a very small town for a major sports franchise. About a quarter million people in the metro area. What that means is we're big enough to have some stuff going on, but small enough to still be a safe community. We have a lot of family-oriented things in town that, that I'll show you, along with uh, some fun things you can, can do as an adult, too. So what we're going to do is start off with all things Packers, and uh, we'll, we'll show you some of that first. And then we'll, we'll go around town a little bit, and I'll, I'll be your tour guide as we go through town. So are you ready to go? All right, let's get started. Green Bay, Wisconsin sits at the southern edge of Lake Michigan's Bay of Green Bay, about 110 miles north of Milwaukee. This shot is taken on the opposite end of town from Lambeau Field, but still only about 15 minutes away. Lambeau Field has been the home of the Green Bay Packers since 1957. It is the longest continually occupied stadium in the National Football League. A $295 million renovation and expansion project completed in 2003 transformed the stadium from one used only on game days into a 365 day per year operation. The impressive Lambeau Field Atrium hosts special events and is home to Curly's Pub Restaurant, the Packers Hall of Fame, and the popular Packers Pro Shop Retail Store. Lambeau Field sits on the southwest side of Green Bay, guarded by large statues of team founder Curly Lambeau and former coach Vince Lombardi. Fans from around the world travel here every year to watch training camp practices across the street, attend games, and take the popular stadium tours offered through the Packers Hall of Fame. Prior to Lambeau Field, the Packers played at City Stadium, which is located behind Green Bay East High School. You can see the stadium today as part of the Packers Heritage Trail of Historic Sites. The field is still used by high school and youth teams today, and it holds a proud place in Packers history as the team's home from 1925 to 1956. At its peak, City Stadium had a capacity of about 25,000 fans. East High School stands on what was once Hagemeister Park, a sandlot field the original Packers played on from 1919 to 1922. The Green Bay area of course offers a variety of other fun places to visit in addition to all the Packers oriented spots. Farmers markets are very popular and none more so than the Broadway market on Wednesday afternoons and evenings. Two blocks of Broadway on the city's near west side are close to traffic for food and craft vendors and the market even features live music and adult beverages. It is part of 120 consecutive days of activities and concerts in the downtown area every summer. If you enjoy a little gambling, Oneida Bingo and Casino offers a variety of games in its facilities across from the airport. Golf is big in Wisconsin, and the Green Bay area has a number of public courses to choose from. Brown County Golf Course is one of the top municipal tracks in the country. It was the first public course to host the Wisconsin State Amateur when it did so in 2005. Fitness fans will find plenty to do in northeastern Wisconsin, highlighted by the Cellcom Green Bay Marathon in May and the Bell and Run 10K race the second Saturday of June. The Bell and Run is one of the largest 10K races in the country with about 18,000 participants annually. Runners, walkers, and wheelchair racers come from around the world, including some of the sports elite. In fact, in the 2012 race shown in this clip, 
four-time Bell and Women's Champion and 1984 Olympic Marathon gold medalist Joan Benoit Samuelson set a national age group record in the 55 and over division on a hot day. If something a little more solitary is more to your liking, you'll want to check out the Coffrin Arboretum Trails on the University of Wisconsin Green Bay campus. Hi, if you can put up with me running a little bit, I love running on this trail. Here's what I'm looking at. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, combination of crushed pea gravel and wood chips, dirt, asphalt and if you go around the whole perimeter of the campus it's about five miles and there's all sorts of shortcuts you can take or you can do out and backs to you know cut that down if that's a little long for you it's not very hilly it's got a few hills here and there nothing major though and you can you know take some strolls down by the beach here and there and uh, it's, it's maintained by a, a dedicated band of volunteers and university workers. And it's amazing how quickly they get this trail looking good after windstorms and things like that. Here's a, one of the few, I better stop this running stuff for you, one of the few uh, asphalt areas, but for the most part it's gorgeous. Whew, well, I just got done with a great morning run here at the UW-Green Bay Coffrin Arboretum Trails. Great place for a morning walk, run, and it's also the site, as you can hopefully see behind me, of the Lambeau Cottage. This was Curly Lambeau, the Packers founder and first coach. This was his cottage. It's now on the campus at UW-Green Bay. They rent the place out for um, meetings and parties, and it's right on the bay. And it's also a great access point to get onto the Coffrin Arboretum Trails. Community Park is right next door to Lambeau Cottage. It's a great spot to catch a very picturesque sunset across the bay. Not far from the UW Green Bay campus is the Shrine of Our Lady of Good Help. Catholics will want to make the short drive to one of the few church-approved apparition sites in the world. Located on County Highway K near Champion, the shrine honors the 1859 vision of the Virgin Mary to a young girl named Adele Bryce. The shrine and the crypt that marks the site had been local treasures for more than 150 years, but it shot to worldwide fame in 2010 with an official declaration by the bishop. Adele Bryce later founded a school here and her grave is just outside the church. Green Bay has a rich collection of museums and learning activities for all ages. The Neville Public Museum is the area's oldest museum and serves as the kickoff point for the Packers Heritage Trail. Directly across the Fox River from the Neville Museum is the Children's Museum of Green Bay. The Children's Museum is the perfect spot for curious kids to burn off some energy with hands-on learning activities. The facility offers 10 interactive galleries, a make-and-take imagination station, and two celebration rooms designed for children up to age 12 and their families. Heritage Hill State Park celebrates Green Bay's European history. This history goes back almost 400 years to 1634 when French explorer Jean Nicolet established a trading post here to deal with the local Indians. Heritage Hill is a living history museum of significant structures that were relocated to the park from around the area. A blacksmith's shop is among the many demonstration sites along with several reconstructed or renovated buildings from Old Fort Howard. The west side of Green Bay, just north of where the Neville Museum now stands, was a French, then a British, and finally an American frontier fort into the mid-1800s.
Bay quickly became a primary city in the new Wisconsin Territory, serving as the center of information distribution. Wisconsin's very first newspaper, the Green Bay Intelligencer, was first published in 1833. The National Railroad Museum in Ashwaubenon offers a step back in time to the days when the railroads provided the primary mode of long-range transportation. The museum collects, preserves, exhibits, and interprets artifacts related to the American rail experience. Its collection contains thousands of objects ranging from personal gear to some of the world's rarest rolling stock. Visitors can walk the aisles of the museum's Grand McCormick Train Pavilion and the Frederick Lenfesty Center, which are home to one of the most awe-inspiring collections of large-scale rail history in the country. The museum's own history goes back to 1958, when a joint resolution of Congress recognized the Young Museum as the National Railroad Museum. What began as an effort to acquire a single steam locomotive for a city park has grown into one of the largest rail museums in the country. Take a walk inside the Union Pacific Dome Diner. This car was built in 1955 for use on the city of Los Angeles Streamliner. Dome cars became very popular during the latter part of rail's glory days, especially on scenic routes. The Green Bay Botanical Garden includes 47 acres of display gardens and natural areas. The Botanical Garden is located behind Northeast Wisconsin Technical College on Green Bay's west side. Opened in 1996, the Botanical Garden's displays capture the beauty of Wisconsin's four distinct seasons. Visitors can stroll the grounds and take in the outstanding garden architecture that features plants specially chosen for their ability to thrive in the upper Midwest climate. Nature truly calls at the New Zoo, which is short for Northeastern Wisconsin Zoo. The zoo is located about 10 miles northwest of Green Bay within the Brown County Reforestation Camp. The zoo and reforestation camp together function as a 1,500-acre recreational area that attracts over a half million visitors every year. The camp has miles of hiking, biking, and nature trails that transition into great snowshoe and cross-country ski trails in the winter. The New Zoo features a variety of indoor and outdoor exhibits with animals ranging from big cats to bear, otters, giraffe, and a wide variety of birds. The zoo's children's petting zoo is the perfect place to introduce youngsters to the wonders of animals in a close-up environment. The new zoo is one of only seven facilities accredited by the AZA that does not receive tax support for its operating budget. Another great nature stop for kids is the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary on Green Bay's northeast side. The sanctuary features live animal exhibits, educational displays, and miles of trails. It is home to the second largest wildlife rehabilitation program in Wisconsin. Feeding corn to the sanctuary's large population of Canada geese has been a thrill for generations of kids. Across the street from the wildlife sanctuary and right on the bay is the most wonderful little amusement park you'll ever visit. Bay Beach Amusement Park is owned by the city and truly is one of Green Bay's treasures. The park features rides ranging from traditional favorites like bumper cars and a ferris wheel to a downsized train that carries riders around the park. Ride tickets cost 25 cents with rides typically taking one or two tickets. So that's right, it costs no more than 50 cents for most of the rides in the park. Food, ice cream cones and drinks are similarly low priced making this the most affordable day at an amusement park you'll ever have. The park dates to the 1890s and served as a social center for many years. The park was a major swimming destination on the bay until pollution forced the beach to close in the 1930s. The park currently consists of 45 acres with 16 rides, a playground, wading pool, softball, and volleyball areas.
Across the street from Bay Beach is a privately owned amusement area called Castle Park. This business offers activities such as mini golf, go-karts, bumper boats, and more. The rates are higher than at Bay Beach, but it's still very much on the affordable side. The star of Bay Beach is the Zippin' Pippin' Roller Coaster. We're on the Zippin' Pippin'. This is a wooden roller coaster that's the star attraction here at Bay Beach. The city spent four million bucks to put it together. It came from Memphis, Tennessee, or it was Elvis's favorite ride. Are you ready? Here we go. Make sure you come and check out the Zip and Pippin when you come to Title Town. Bye!